Bum-ba-da-dum. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben. I teach you how to play banjo and guitar. This week is Manlin Week. One of the most common questions that I get both in email and over on the forum is about chord charts. How do you play chords? How do you find chords? Um, and when it comes to Manlin, another thing that I also hear is it's so hard to do those big four-finger chords for your rhythm chop. And I admit, that's a big stretch. So what I want to do today is begin to introduce some what I would call alternate chords. And we're going to mainly use two string, if not three string uh, chords, kind of shorthand chords that are, it's not cheating because some of the best mandolin players in the world use these to play rhythm, but it is going to be an alternative to playing the big traditional four finger chords that I still think has a big role in our playing, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, so do I have a chord chart for this lesson? No, I don't, because I'm going to teach you the theory where you don't have to ever look for a chord chart again. Uh, you can create your own chord chart by just thinking about the mandolin neck. So if you're watching here on the website, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Just scroll down, you'll see the rest of the video lessons in the tab for this lesson. And if you're watching somewhere else, then you should be over on the site as a Gold Pick member at banjovinclark.com. Let's get started. We have to ask the question, why are we doing this alternate rhythm chords? Why are we playing something else besides those uh, big, maybe cumbersome four finger chords? Um, and there's a few different reasons. I think most importantly, sometimes the song calls for it. Also, sometimes people may have a really difficult time reaching those four finger chords. I hear that a lot. I do want to encourage you that most of the time when you can't reach those four finger chords, it is technique related because there are too many um, kids out there with very short fingers and regular sized mandolins that are getting those. So we need to also ask questions about our technique. But sometimes the song just demands uh, that we use that. But I want to talk about what mandolin rhythm is really, um, because we need to keep in mind some very important pieces about mandolin rhythm. Now I've covered uh, a basic mandolin rhythm series in my beginner mandolin section on the website uh, that talks about a lot of this in detail. So I won't go all the way through that. I recommend that for your viewing. But when we think about mandolin rhythm, there's one thing that we really need to keep in mind, and that's its job on beats two and four. The mandolin has a big major job when it's playing rhythm, and that's to make a sound on beats two and four. And, and when you think about it, it makes sense because what we're trying to do is, is um, kind of mimic what a, what a a drum kit would do over in country or rock music. And when you think about a drum kit, it's got two main pieces that are happening. It's got the kick drum, boom, 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 boom. And then in between those booms is a snare drum, boom, chuck, boom, chuck. And so in 4-4 four, four time, which is what most of our music is in, we have that kick drum happening on beats one and three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the snare drum, that means this happens on beats two and four, what we call the backbeat or the upbeats. So one, two, three, foo. One, two, three, two. Okay, so the mandolin's job is to mimic what that snare drum does. It's going to be playing a chop on beats two and four to establish that drive. And I, I just want to say that if we ever lose that, then I think you lose bluegrass. You lose a lot of the drive and really the purpose for having the instrument in the, uh, in the rhythm. So we can get as advanced and as modern as we want, but we just need to keep that in mind. That's it's just my opinion. And I also want to say that if all you ever did was make a big old four finger chord and just play good solid chops on beats two and four, you would be a very valuable rhythm player. One, two, three, four, one, two. That's all you really need to do. But let's talk about this alternate chord, alternate approach, an alternative to playing those big four fingered chords. Okay, so when we think about our big four finger chords, we're covering all the strings, or sometimes we play it with three fingers and we um, are just playing the bottom three strings and we're muting that, that top string. Well, we're gonna take a little different approach here with these alternate chords and play primarily the bottom two strings. So the G string and the D string. And I wanna do an overview of the technique right now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the theory because I, I want you to be able to find chords wherever you're on the mandolin neck. I don't want you to have to uh, uh, depend on chord charts. I want you to be able to create your own chord chart in real time based on what you know about the mandolin neck. So that's why we're gonna cover the theory. And then we'll of course get into some application where we'll play this over some 12 bar blues. But let's concentrate on this bottom two strings. And before we get into the theory, I just want you to mimic what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and place our index finger on the fourth fret of the low G string. 
up and let's put our middle finger on the fifth fret of the next string, that D string. Can you play both of those at the same time? Now try not to go all the way through and play that A string just like I did. And I want you almost to aim for the bottom string and then let your pick kind of go through and hit the next string. So it's not like we're trying to rake through. Okay, we're, we're making a pretty percussive approach to that string. And you don't have to raise and dampen your strings with your left hand right now. We're just practicing hitting those bottom strings. Now those happen to be two notes that are in a G chord. And that's what we're going to concentrate today is on um, the G chord. And, you know, if you do ever go through and hit some of those open strings, it usually sounds okay. Sometimes it can become part of your technique. But what's interesting about what we're looking at here is that those two notes, those two strings, are going to happen on beats one and three. They're going to happen with the bass drum and with the stand-up bass. Um, so we've still got to create a chop. And the way we're going to get our chop with this technique is we're going to mute all the strings. I'm going to do it with my pinky. Some people do it with their ring finger. I'm going to do it with my pinky. I'm going to lay it flatly across all eight strings. And that's where I'm going to get my chop sound. So it's going to be a different sounding chop than here. It's just going to be more of a benign. And I'm playing it over the harmonics. But... Okay, so now instead of just playing two and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, now we're going to play something on all four beats, um, or at least to practice it. We're going to play one, and then mute the strings, two, three, four. Now whenever I do lay my pinky down over the strings, I release the pressure with these two fingers, not all the way off, but just enough to, to stop that sound, even though we are also muting with our pinky. Can you practice that with me? Maybe slow it down a little more. Takes a little coordination at first. Good. So let's just hear the difference between a traditional G four string or four fingered chop versus that. So it would uh, the traditional way would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or sometimes we play the root notes or the low notes on the one and three as well. So one, two, three, four. With our alternate formation here, that's going to look a little different and sound just a little bit different. Listen. Okay, so now that we've got kind of a handle on the technique, that'll take practice to get it more smooth. That's okay. Don't let yourself get hung up on that right now. Let's go ahead and dive into the theory so that we can find whatever chords that we need, specifically today in the key of G, and uh, be able to apply it to our playing.